at CPM Group Silver Reception during the PDAC, and with me now is Greg Johnson, and now of a new venture called Metallic. Greg, good to have you back on. Nice to be here, thank you. Because, you know, looking at your history, you started off, let me see, with gold, then silver, then platinum, and here you are back with a silver company. Yeah, I guess, you know. You're loyal to the metals. Loyal to the precious metals, and, uh, you know, I think the t timing is right to look at silver again, so. You know, you've been at the helm of many companies, started many companies. What did you learn at your past ventures that you want to do differently now? Well, this, this one is a little bit different story than the others in that it's a brownfield exploration play. I'm a geologist by training, so I'm actually quite excited to be starting a little earlier than I did on some of the others where we were taking them through to feasibility. This is an opportunity for me to work with the team closely to really get hands-on in terms of creating value uh, and to be working in a jurisdiction, the Yukon Territory in this case, that's really a great open to mining type of uh, jurisdiction. But is there something you do differently in terms of your leadership style or what you did from the past? I mean, you know, we've, we've had harsh times in the industry before. Is there, is there a lesson learned? Well, I mean, it has been, it has been a, a, a learning experience to go through the cycles that we do. As you know, how hyper cyclical from back in the 1990s when I was with the big company, Barrick Gold, uh, through Nova Gold and Well Green and South American Silver. So it, it has been a real up and down in terms of the waves. But what I guess I've really come to appreciate is you are building different elements of your company and what your strategy is at different parts of the cycle. And at this part of the cycle, I think what we're trying to do is accumulate the assets that we want to work on now while the prices are still modest and to be able to put the right team in place to explore those, develop those into resources and take them forward. I want to get more into the project in a second, but uh, when you were at Wellgreen, uh, one thing, you know, one high you did leave on was that you doubled the resource, correct? Correct, yeah. Now, that, that, you know, that's, that's no small feat. Um, how can you kind of repeat this magic? Well, we're starting with an earlier stage company. It's a brownfields operation where it's basically looking at exploration in a proven district that's produced over 200 million ounces historically. So in this case, we think our probability of success, because they say the best place to find a new mine is right next to an existing one, is that we get in there and drill holes. And so we're kind of starting from ground zero. It's very early days. And so on a percentage basis, we're going to more than double these things because we don't have a big resource to start with, but we've got 12 high quality targets that we'll be drilling. Some of these are past producers, so we think the opportunity to create value by going from really exploration stage to resource is going to be very good. Now, we all know Gold Rush, a popular show, mines in the Yukon, and that's what most people know about the region. Uh, do you think that sheds good light on, on, on the Yukon? Well, I think it does highlight it as one of those areas in the world that has this amazing endowment in metal. In that case, the Klondike was gold. But a lot of people don't realize that the Keno Hill Silver District that we're working in created more value in silver than the Klondike Gold Rush did in gold. Yeah, because I remember when you were at Walgreens, I thought, platinum and Yukon, really? And, you know, we've we, we known gold and Yukon, but now silver and Yukon. Do you know how many ounces of silver you could possibly be sitting on? Well, I don't know right now uh, because we still have to do that work. But they produce 200 million ounces. Alexco is in all categories is, you know, there's 67 million ounces measured and indicated, and then another 30 million ounces or so in inferred, so that's almost 100 million more, plus we got the other half of the district in the east. So this thing could be, it has all the earmarks of something that could be really big. Now, I need to ask you your forecast for silver. It's had a good run here, up, you know, what, 12% since the start of the year. Uh, how do you see the metal position, Greg? You know, I think this has been, uh, it's been a good period. It's, you know, we had the peak in August, then we had the retracement, it's been rebuilding. I think we're gonna see new highs. So I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna go beyond the highs that we saw in 2016.